I've seen so many bands in my various roles that just think, hey, great, we'll go on tour and nothing's ready. And it'll only damage their careers. Um, from an engineering point of view, um, as well, you know, people that don't understand how to set up systems and you end up sorting the system either on a, if you're on a club tour or whatever. I did a club tour of America a long time ago and I would go in three or four hours before the band just to try and sort the systems out. And, um, you know, that, that shouldn't be the case. And in a lot of smaller venues, the house guys can be frustrated that they're not out on the road. And so I always try to be really nice to those guys, but sometimes even doing that doesn't work. I've been a house guy myself and I always try to learn from the guys coming in and that's again I don't want anyone to think that I think I'm better than anyone I'm not it's just that if everyone's cool it's going to make things much easier the combination of volume and a badly tuned system is damaging and uh, I managed an artist uh, it was a band and I went to see them playing somewhere in Portsmouth and they had this new sound engineer and I hadn't been involved in this process at all I'd just taken them on and I went to see the show and I left after about 45 seconds because it hurt. It hurt physically because the, the sound pressure level on my body hurt, but my ears were burning because, you know, uh, obviously this is a pretty harsh system. The guy hadn't EQ'd out the harshness and it's not about transients and it's not about, you know, nice crunch and stuff like that. This was just hurty. So people that don't spend the time getting things right and, you know, I'm not looking for a soft 70s vibe everywhere. I'm just looking to not hurt people and damage ears. Um, they're all peeves. So, you know, although I did make these giant leaps in, in my career, and I, and I did, you know, only because I was taking chances or was lucky or, or, or whatever, you know. And at, at each of those steps, even down to having wired a desk in and reading the manual three hours before the session started, I, I tried to do homework to understand what it is that was expected of me. Um, I do think there's a lot of validity in knocking on the door of, if you want to be a live engineer of a PA company, knocking on the door of a studio if you, if you want to be a, a studio engineer and just saying, I'm going to come here and work for you and trying your hand, you know, chance your luck, see what happens. You know, uh, not everybody asks for a degree before you can make tea in a studio. Some people appreciate the fact that you've knocked on the door and you've taken the chance. And I did a lecture where um, it, was the, it was the end uh, of a, uh, a summer term before the summer break. And I said to all the sound students in there, okay, what are you doing over the summer? About 90% of them had the similar answer, which was buy Doritos, watch movies. And I said, well, don't bother coming back next year. Because you've got to want it, whether you're a musician, whether you're uh, you know, a, a featured artist, whether you want to be an engineer, whether you want to be backline crew, you've got to want it really badly. This is not an easy life. The, the, the payoff is you get to do amazing things and go great places, but it's really hard work. And if you don't have a love for it, you're going to suffer because Sooner or later, you're going to wake up and say, I can't do this anymore. And if you haven't got the passion for it, you're not going to do it very well as well.